Hi, Gigi from the RBA. This video is part of our series on monetary policy. This one talks about the target for the cash rate. Let's take a quick look at our roadmap. In the last video, we discussed the different kinds of interest rates in the economy. I recommend you watch that video before proceeding with this one. In this video, we're going to look at the most well-known tool of monetary policy, the target for the cash rate. This is called conventional monetary policy because it's the tool that the RBA has used most to influence interest rates for much of the past 30 years or so. In most countries, conventional monetary policy involves a target for a policy interest rate, and in Australia this is the cash rate. The RBA announces its target for the cash rate following each board meeting. The cash rate is the interest rate for borrowing in the cash market, which is a market where commercial banks can borrow and lend cash to each other overnight. To understand the cash market, we need some background on how the banking system works. Think of the RBA as the banker for the banks, and also for the government. Much like you may have an account where you deposit your money at a bank, commercial banks have their very own account with the RBA. These accounts are called exchange settlement or ES accounts. The government also has an account with the RBA where it does its banking. So the cash banks hold in their ES account is called an ES fund or balance and is a form of electronic money. Just like you think of cash deposited in your bank account as a bank deposit, think of cash deposited in an ES account as an ES balance. Commercial banks exchange ES balances between each other with the RBA and with the government every day. When you direct your bank to pay money to someone who uses another bank, say by paying for clothes on your debit card, your bank will transfer cash from their ES account to the other bank's ES account. The other bank will then pay the business that sold you the clothes. Therefore, to make payments happen across the economy, banks must exchange cash between each other in their ES accounts. Similarly, if you receive cash from the government, for example from Medicare, it will find its way to you via your bank's ES account at the RBA. So to make sure the system works properly, the RBA requires individual banks to always have a positive balance in their ES accounts. Only the RBA can create and remove ES balances from the banking system, which means that if banks need extra cash in their ES account, or have too much, they can only borrow, lend or transact them with another bank or the RBA. So sometimes a bank may not have enough cash in their ES account, maybe because they needed to make a lot of payments to other banks on behalf of their customers. To fix this, a bank must go to the cash market and borrow cash overnight to deposit in its ES account. The cash rate indicates the price the bank has paid to borrow that cash. The next day, the bank must pay back the cash it has borrowed with interest, perhaps from new flows it receives into its ES account. Of course, if a bank is borrowing cash, another bank has to lend it to them. Other banks may have spare cash in their ES account that they can lend and earn some profit from. The cash rate also indicates the return they receive for lending. So in summary, the cash market is a place where banks can borrow and lend cash to each other overnight to make sure they have enough cash handy in their ES accounts to settle payments. The cash rate tells us on average how much they paid or received to do this. But recall we said the RBA sets a target for the cash rate. How does the RBA make sure that the actual cash rate, which can change each day depending on what happens in the cash market, stays near its target? Well, it uses something called the policy interest rate corridor. Let's take a look at a graph of the Australian cash market to understand this. On the graph, the horizontal axis is the quantity or amount of cash available to trade in the cash market, and on the vertical axis is the price of cash. This blue line here shows how much cash banks demand for their ES accounts at different values of the cash rate. It slopes down because a higher cash rate, or price of borrowing, reduces the quantity of cash that banks want to borrow to hold in their ES accounts. This green line is the supply of cash in ES accounts. It's vertical because remember the RBA is the only one who can control the amount of ES balances in the banking system. This black line is the cash rate target, and the grey lines above and below the cash rate target form what's called the policy interest rate corridor. These are the rates at which banks can borrow cash from and deposit cash with the RBA. Above is the RBA lending rate. 
the rate at which banks can borrow cash for use as ES balances overnight from the RBA, instead of from another bank. The lending rate is always 0.25% above the cash rate target, and it changes as the cash rate target does. Banks have no incentive to borrow from another bank at interest rates higher than the RBA's lending rate, because it would always be cheaper to borrow from the RBA. This means there's no transactions above this ceiling of the corridor. On the flip side, below the cash rate target is the RBA deposit rate, the rate at which banks can deposit cash as ES balances at the RBA. This also changes alongside the target for the cash rate. In the past, the deposit rate was always 0.25% below the cash rate target, but because of the record low level of the cash rate, it's now only 0.1% below the target. Banks have no incentive to accept a deposit rate from another bank lower than the RBA offers, so there are no transactions below this floor of the corridor. What this means is that all activity in the cash market is contained within the RBA's interest rate corridor, meaning that the cash rate should never move outside. But the cash rate is also affected by the amount of ES balances supplied to banks, the green line. Notice on this diagram that the demand and supply lines intersect right at the cash rate target, so the actual cash rate is the same as its target. The RBA is the only institution that can create or remove ES balances in the economy, and traditionally it's kept the supply of ES balances pretty small and relied on the policy interest rate corridor to control the cash rate. But what would happen if the RBA allowed the supply of ES balances to increase? This might happen because of the use of other monetary policy tools, which we'll look at over the coming videos. Well, the supply line would move to the right, and the intersection with the demand line would now imply a lower cash rate than before, below the target. If the RBA allowed the supply of ES balances to keep increasing and increasing, the cash rate would fall further below its target. But when the intersection between demand and supply reaches the RBA deposit rate, the cash rate cannot fall any lower because banks would deposit their extra ES balances at the RBA instead of trying to lend them to another bank in the cash market. This example shows us how the cash rate should never fall outside the policy corridor. So in summary, the RBA uses the policy interest rate corridor to ensure the cash rate trades near its target. In a world where other monetary policy tools are used alongside the cash rate target, the supply of ES balances can increase and this may cause the cash rate to drift below its target. But the co policy corridor will ensure the cash rate remains near its target, and in any case above the RBA deposit rate, which acts as a floor for the cash rate and all other interest rates in the economy. This process we've just talked about is called monetary policy implementation. So now we know how the cash rate target works as a monetary policy tool. But why does the cash rate matter for us? It's because the cash rate is a reference point for other interest rates in the economy. For example, banks use the cash rate as a reference point for the interest rates at which they lend money to customers. But why is the cash rate used as the reference point? Because in the world of financial markets, the cash rate is as close as you can get to a risk-free interest rate. If an interest rate is risk-free, it means there's no chance, or almost no chance, that a borrower will fail to repay money that they have borrowed to a lender. So what's the benefit of using a risk-free reference point for these interest rates? Well, it allows us to use a building block approach to think about other interest rates in the economy. So if you recall from our last video, an interest rate measures the opportunity cost of doing something with our money today. Measuring the overall opportunity cost of a particular decision can involve many considerations and risks. For instance, imagine a lender. When they set a lending rate to reflect their opportunity cost of making the loan, they must consider how likely they think the borrower is to repay a loan, among other things. The greater the risk the borrower cannot repay, the higher the lending rate will be. And of course, this will be different for every borrower. The cash rate is important because it provides a starting point to measure the overall opportunity cost of doing something with our money today. Because we consider it to be basically risk-free, it doesn't involve any risks or considerations that may be irrelevant to our particular circumstances. Starting from the cash rate, we can then think about all the factors and risks that are relevant for our decision and build up to an interest rate that appropriately reflects our opportunity cost. 
There are many factors that could affect our opportunity cost, and we can't hope to talk about them all. Some are whether interest rates are variable or fixed, the risks associated with different types of lending, conditions in financial markets, competition for borrowers and savers of money, and in financial markets, how easily assets are bought and sold. So remember, when a bank decides what interest rate to charge a business borrowing some money, or a household is shopping around for the best deposit rate on their savings, or when a participant in financial markets decides how to price the financial asset, the interest rate is always influenced by the cash rate. So that's all for this video. Next in this series, we'll talk about interest rates in a bit more detail before then looking at unconventional monetary policy tools. See you next time.